So, uh, this session that we've got today, yeah. this meat lunch today, yeah. is this the off islanders Scottish and <laughs> Irish <laughs> approach? Are you trying to? Are you just, are you just <laughs> trying to? Is this take, is the multicultural there approach? There was no. Literally, <laughs> I had, originally, when I set this idea up, we've done this is our fourth one we've done now. And originally, I was like, I'll put this guy with this lady or whatever, and and mm. then um, it always came down to. No, they can't do that. They, they can't mm. do that. So I think I asked John twice. You must have and I think twice. I was, oh, yeah. No, I think I asked you three times. Oh, yeah. I'm sure right, I have. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah so, and this might be mm. the third time. Mm. And I was like, it's just impossible to get people together. Yeah. At well, the same I was just time. waiting for someone nice to have lunch with. I know. I I said, yes. <laughs> you know yeah, but that wasn't going to happen, so we just had to do it. Wait, now I'll, I'll let yeah. you know where we're no, I, 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 I didn't even ask who with, did I? No, you didn't. No, I didn't either. No. And I, uh, but if you'd known, yeah, if, we'd, uh, if only we'd known, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I just thought, I, I said, I thought John's name, and I thought, this must be the fact that you've, you've got all these uh, Scottish and uh, Irish people yeah. coming here, and that's what you're doing. We've yeah. got Six Nations coming back yeah. uh, yes. this weekend uh, and next, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's literally yeah. just trying to get people together is more difficult than I realise, especially at the moment, and with uh, obviously COVID and stuff, mm. and actually being able to get the space, because even mm. the venues are, are difficult, because yeah. obviously they need to be able to fill up their space. Well, we are doing... Um, I think I might have mentioned it to you before, uh, but might be we need to somehow look at how you can use this and reverse reverse this into visit Isle of Wight. But yeah. we, we've done a deal with um, um, Meridian Dave. Oh, yeah. I can't remember no, yeah. his name now. Dave Russell. Russell. Dave Russell. Dave Russell. Yeah. It's, so just, you, it's just always known as Meridian Dave. Yeah. Nobody ever calls him anything. No, no. Else. So, uh, so you know he's got this Isle of Wight webcam yeah. uh, website. So. We're basically sponsoring the website, uh, so it's about to. It's having a revamp. The big year. Yeah, we've got, we've got, doing we've got the links on our site. Um, we've got the link to the webcams on our yeah. site. So we're going to revamp the site. We're also going to put, um, although we're having some technical challenges with it. Yeah. Put, uh, it's more YouTube. Is each, each camera. Uh, we'll, we're going to create a YouTube oh. channel as well, which means, you know, on your big screen TV. You can just go to the YouTube app and get to them. Um, and most critically, we're upgrading the cameras to 4K cameras. Nice. And plugging our full fiber into them. So it will, so the, the video quality is going to be uh, Ultra HD, ul, Ultra HD, HDR, yeah. uh, all that stuff. Um, and it, it, is, it, is gonna, it is gonna deploy slowly because it obviously needs a network connection from mm. us and and some of these places where you would want a webcam you're simply not going to be able to have one because you said you're having uh, one of the needles you, you know <laughs> can't, uh, needles is desperate for something yeah, uh, for the needles so we will who's, well, the, who's, we, the, who's the, the needles for that is that uh, the national trust guys or um, uh, no just um, Dave in, russell is yeah, because right. actually every time there's a storm the highest wind speed recorded it's in the UK big. is at mm. the Needles, yeah. and all the you know t the TV news outlets are asking him for uh, Coverage, yeah. he would make money from live yeah, yeah. live footage yeah. of the Needles. Mm. It's and, always um, it's always top it's always top there on yeah, the wind gusts. Yeah. So um, I mean, who knows? But uh, uh, you know, it's we're only doing we're doing fresh water next year, so mm. it'll be, it'll only be once. Fresh water's done that we can look at it, but the main the main challenge is mm -hmm. gonna, it's a twisty windy road and it would you know take an age. But uh, I guess, but I guess so you won't have you know anything that's on top of a hill. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got the church spire and ride is the yeah. first one. So that's actually the cameras in there and everything, uh, but it's got some technical problems because our our network's IPv6 mm -hmm. and. Not every device uh, can can work with that very well, so it works. It just keeps losing its connection yeah. every now and then. So the guys are working on it, um, and you know we'll we'll basically slowly replace. Um, well, let's say we've got, all, we've got the, the stuff other cameras. We've got the links yeah. already there for people to look at, and they, they are quite. Um, uh, you know, people are using them quite yeah. a lot. It's amazing yeah, how so much they get used yeah, webcams. Yeah, you think yeah. like Times Square, the webcams they got there, people are always watching. Yeah. Them. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, well, the other thing, of course, is you know, especially if we put it on YouTube. I think YouTube is the is the channel for this. Um, it you know you'll get stats of how many mm. people are watching it. You might even 
you know, if we get clever about it, might even be able to start catching, capturing mm -hmm. information on who's watching it and marketing to them. Because it's amazing, the, the needles are so iconic. Mm -hmm. Not here it is, everyone knows what, what it really yeah. are, but <coughs> anyone who comes here, everyone wants to go to the needles. Yeah. And, and you know, I had some friends down from Scotland and uh, after, after we'd moved here and they came down to stay with us, mm -hmm. I said, so what do you want to do? I'm trying to go to the needles. Yeah. I said, mm -hmm. have you been researching? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, everybody knows the needles. needles. Everybody yeah. knows the needles. We want yeah. to do the needles. And that's, and that's yeah. what we, we yeah. took them out there. So, yeah. um, the needles are black gang chime. Everybody's yeah. been to black gang chime. Even if they went there as a school child. From, mm -hmm. Here in London, it's always, oh, no, I'm, I know black gang chime. Because yeah. Yeah. I went there when I was a child. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. But yeah, they are those iconic locations, aren't they? Yeah. And, it's, and it is something that's, that everybody knows. I, I, was, I was absolutely flabbergasted when my mate said that to me. Mm. I thought, because he's, he's not one to do his research, mm. let's put it that way. He just turns up and does things. Yeah. Um, but he says, yeah, I want to go there. Mm. Okay, let's do that. We, we did a lot of things <coughs> right as an island. Mm. You know, we, 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 we planned it all the way through as to when we're mm. ready to go. And we worked with, worked with the council and yeah. we worked with the ferry companies and yeah. the message was always the same throughout. Yeah. That the, um, you know, the island is waiting for you to come. Yeah. And, um, but as soon as it started, people were getting there and there it was, it was really, really busy. And, you know, it was in different tiers. So you were having the surf catering and, uh, uh, um, caravan parks type stuff where you could come and be in your own mm -hmm. bubble and people were coming and doing that and that was that was filling up and full yeah. Yeah. Um, people were saying you know yeah we've had a few cancellations but I'm able to just top it right back up yeah. to, to that sort of thing yeah. and yeah. then the service accommodation was coming back in uh, and filling that up as well so yeah. summer's been great yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, summer's been great the capacity has been amazing um, you know places like here they, they've worked really hard to get it right yeah yeah Definitely, and get um, all the proportions in it's, place. Um, it's, it's, you know, October half term is busy. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, the, the feedback I'm getting is it's pretty busy. Even the attractions uh, have got a good the tail end of the... Yeah, the attractions are going to be good for that. You know, the, you know, the message we're getting out there is, you know, we're open. Yeah. Uh, autumn campaign, and we probably can't use this now that we'll age it, but the autumn campaign uh, goes live today. So we, we uh, you know, this afternoon all of our social media mm. stuff changes into uh, the video yeah. work we've done for for autumn, oh, okay. and uh, you know the, the, the website uh, sort of header um, video is changed last night, but yeah. it's, it's changed in for autumn, and it's all about you know come here, uh, you know you've got your coats on, um, it might be wet, but enjoy it, yeah. Uh, but because we've got great food, we've got great wine, yeah. we've got great places yeah. to stay, and and come and enjoy it, and we're linking in with the. Escape the everyday, yeah. which is visit England's main uh, main mm. sort of push. So we are we are um, uh, we are using that as a sort of headline. Escape the everyday, mm. and uh, um, I think escape the everyday is actually what the, the Navy's one as well. But uh, um, uh, the Royal Navy commanders or something like that. But, uh, yeah. but visit England have pulled this as their sort of main mm. strap line because domestic tourism is just. Everything for yeah. uh, for the UK at the minute because you're not getting any international yeah. international business. Well, it's staycations now, isn't it? Yeah, Everybody's absolutely. Staycations, right. so it's like you know. It was just the uh, the you know uh, help out, eat out to help out. Mm. Yeah, uh, that ruined it because you could not get uh, a table mm. uh, on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, anywhere. Some, anywhere. It was dreadful. I think it was a great initiative. Just and, and, and it helped a lot, yeah. but but it, but it messed up for a lot of people yeah. in a certain way. But some people, yeah, some people are still doing it, aren't they? They're still yeah. continuing because it was yeah. like, so good for the certain restaurants that they just yeah. thought, well, we just keep keep doing it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it gets people in tourism, seats. Tourism doing well. Yeah. So October half time will be well. You know, we'll we'll launch, you know, book for twenty twenty one on Boxing Day. You I know, when everybody's. Yeah. Uh, well, except the people in Scotland who have been told to do a digital Christmas. Uh, they think <laughs> told mean, yesterday to do a digital Christmas or, or look yeah, forward to it. Yeah, that to save money. Yeah, I think <laughs> probably, yeah, probably, yeah, probably right, actually. Um, but, you know, that's the time when people are I making decisions. I Is that what they've been told? Yeah, the, did, um, yeah no mix. Name, Professor Leach, who's their sort of uh, um, top guy for, uh, I don't know, the, um, uh, you know, like the, 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 the experts. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the mm -hmm. scientific experts, he's saying um, we need to start preparing for a digital Christmas. 
Mm. Um, but there's also one as well. If you if you ever Scottish um, the Scottish leader, the Scottish first minister, Nicola Sturgeon, they've got an actual. Um, there's a, there's a comedian who's doing voiceovers of all of her. Uh, I've all seen of her a couple, thing. yeah. Um, I've and, seen a couple. And she's absolutely amazing. Thank you. Mm, thank you very much. Wow, that was lovely. amazing. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was, was amazing. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, dig nice. in, guys. Yeah, thank you. How much live TV do mm. I, I hardly watch any live TV? The only one is our on Rugby League live on, on Sky. Mm. On, uh, on it. But um, I'm always on, yeah. oh, to be fair, actually, I'm on Netflix a lot and those sort of other streaming platforms. But it's like you don't wait around for a series anymore, do you? The series comes out in one, in one go. Mm. No, you yeah. don't have to wait around. Just Not always. Yeah, we just download all of our. I'm a big coach trip fan. Oh, really? Yeah, huge. <laughs> Unbelievable. Coach trip. Have you watched it? Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. There's, there's one it's on funny. at the moment. Um, and it, must, it must be one I've not, I've not had, but it's, they're going from Croatia to Barcelona and mm. it is brutal. That's one really? where they go on it's and try, brutal. they all go on together and try different activities yeah, together and then they like blow people brutal. off the, the and coach. We, back in my days up in, when I worked in Hull with, with P&O, we actually had coach trip on the ferry going across from Hull to Rotterdam one yeah. night and uh, we met them and did all the, the voting outside the, outside the ship before they went on. It was great. It was amazing. Great coverage. Yeah. And um, the uh, but I'm, I'm watching that. So I I'm downloading the whole series and just just was plowing through it. Yeah. And I've even got my uh, my 17 year old son. He said, "Can we watch Coach Trip tonight?" Let's, let's just do, let's do one of these over, over dinner. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. And it, and at the minute mm. it is brutal. Really. Yeah. It's brutal. Mm. Must admit, our, my kids are getting into. We've been watching this series probably. Shouldn't be watching them, they're a bit young, really. But Cobra, have you heard of Cobra Kai? It's like um, Karate Kid. You know that like Karate Kid, but it's like when they're older. So oh. like Johnny and, uh, and oh, the guy from Karate Kid. I thought it was just still. Oh, no, movie. no, it's a two, there's two, oh, okay. two series actually. It's okay. so interesting because they flipped it on their head. So it's like um, Johnny, who was like the bad guy, and the Karate mm -hmm. Kid's kind of sort of like you kind of quite like him. And the, I think it's Danny or whatever his name is, who was a karate kid. Yeah. You kind of think, oh, he's not very nice actually. But okay. they flipped up, so they completely sort of gone on from when Danny got uh, beat in the karate kid film and then what mm -hmm. happened afterwards. Right. Right. Like years later, and he's like 40 or 45, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's just really, it's well worth watching. My kids love it. They've been watching it on their own. It's a little bit, it's probably a little bit rude for their age group, to be fair. But what age are they? Uh, one, one's, uh, four, four and two. One, one, one's, no, it's, it's not quite that bad, but it's close. Um, one's six and one's um, one's nine. But they do swear at it sometimes and they just say, don't repeat those words. That's, that's rude. Yeah, but you've got to, you've got to, you can't not because it happens all the time, doesn't it? And yeah, it's, yeah. It's, if you get desensitised to all that sort of stuff, yeah. you've got to open them up a little bit to it. But I would, I would really recommend it. It's on Netflix, and it's just, it's just really interesting the way they flipped it around. I'm in season four of The Man in the High Castle. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. Episode five, season yeah. four, Man in the High Castle. Still don't know what's going on. <laughs> I still haven't worked it out. What's and, and I'll get to the end of it all, <clears throat> because it, it is, you, you, I've put the effort in, mm. and I'll get to the end, and I need to see it. As to what happens. So you've not enjoyed it? No, oh, yeah, I have enjoyed it. It's been great, but I still don't, I don't know what's going on. No. Okay. So do you remember Comic Con that they had in Kai's Enterprise yeah, yeah, College? Yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the actors from Man in the High Castle was there. I've got a photograph with him. Yeah. I'm just trying to find what, it. It's pretty it good. About? What's it's basically mm -hmm. about. Um, um, have, you, have you ever read any of the um, Philip K. Dick? Um, science, uh, science fiction novels. No. It's based on one of his novels. Okay. He's, he is out there with some of his stuff. It's, mm. it's, it's some really good stuff. But um, it's based on one of his things and it is an alternative end to World War II, basically. Oh, really? Well, that's what, what, what I have remember. Uh, but there's alternative. There you go, you recognise him? Oh, yeah, the absolutely. Japanese, yeah. The Japanese, He's the trade minister. The Japanese trade minister. Yeah, yeah. wow. <laughs> Absolutely, it's good. He was in, uh, in Kai's, that was in Mukai's in really? Kai's. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Yeah. It's great, it's, it's very well done. He it's, told me about it. It was season three, had just. What, did you say season four is out? I'm in season four. And they'll talk about season five as well. 
I hadn't even clocked there was a season four. Mm -hmm. um, when did season four come out? Then? I have oh, some idea. Is that on I'm, Netflix, is it? Or? No, I've got it on it's, Prime. Uh, it's Sky. Prime Video. Oh, Prime Video. Oh, I've got Prime. Mm. Yeah, he, did, he said from the outset, um, from the day they started filming, they knew where it was headed. Really? So it wasn't like they did season one and season two and then went, all oh, right, what are we going to do next? From the outset, they knew where it was headed. Mm. I've not come across oh, I'll that. I'll go and check. I haven't, no, I'm not missing uh, uh, yeah. it's, uh, the latest season. But, I'm, but let, let's put it this way. I have no idea where it's going. Yeah. <laughs> and, but equally, I'm not going to give up on it. Oh, really? Yeah. I've ended up going back through Lost for some reason. I don't actually saw the first on series four of that and it's a bit of an old series now but it's actually it's pretty decent actually i kind of forgot how good it was when it first came out i watched a few episodes and then never really watched anymore and i thought oh, no I'll give, that's the thing i love about it now it's like you know something that you haven't seen in years or it's not been on the telly in years you can go back and go actually you know what i just yeah. got to watch that let's yeah. go and watch let's watch some of this that you know you would never normally would have happened well i'm, I'm an aston villa fan so obviously i'm not Massively in the sport. Well, they're, they're top of the league, aren't <laughs> they? They are now. Mm. This, we're having a good start of the season. Four, four, four games in a row or three games in a row? Yeah, so we are. We're at second in the league, actually. I think Everton ahead because they've got mm. an extra game in hand. Oh, uh, okay. But, but um, yeah, we've had the best start in nine years. So. Well, like everyone's, uh, according, I was listening to the radio. I list, started listening to Times Radio now because oh. I've read the Times since yeah. I was at, uh, at school, a student. Um, and now they've got uh, Times Radio, which, uh, you know, lots of overlap between the journalists and yeah. uh, the content. Um, and so the, the, the sports uh, reporter there was comparing, suggesting to the Aston Villa manager that they might be, uh, do the Leicester trick. So uh, Leicester <laughs> avoided <laughs> relegation on the last day and of the, the yeah. of the season, and then the following season won that was the Premiership. That was, imagine that. I would be so chuffed. But I can't sit. The problem, <clears throat> as if you're a Villa fan, you know, you get you get these moments. You know, mm. never to get over carried away because you know at the end of it, it's just never gonna. It's never going to happen, but, I mean, you know, you never know, you might I'm, be lucky. I'm, I'm <laughs> Scottish at the end of the day, so Scottish Rugby Union and Scottish football, I'm used to yeah. uh, mediocrity <laughs> and sometimes uh, right down the bottom, so I'm used to that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Very slow resurgence in Scottish Rugby Union now, yeah. but their problem is they just don't have the, the pool of players. They've got two, pro two professional teams. Yeah. Well, that's good, isn't it? And that's not really, I mean, so Ireland's got four, yeah. so a bit more of a pool. Of a pool. Um, and then the you know, French and the English just yeah, have uh, yeah. so many clubs that yeah. they you just have this greater pool. But then New Zealand, you think small population, mm. what pool do they have there? And they manage to be fairly yeah. dominant. I remember being in New Zealand when the World Cup was on. Mm. I think it was England against because I was staying with some New Zealand friends, and it was England against New Zealand. Pretty sure they beat us on that occasion, which they were. We were Joined about for some time, but yeah, they're massive into it out there. Absolutely. They're hugely, it is the sport there. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, all they, that, that's all they care about. The, it's, it, it, rugby in New Zealand is what football yeah, yeah, is here. You know, everybody yeah. here mm. plays football, even, I mean, even uh, yeah, on a Sunday morning, all the kids are up yeah. at our rugby yeah, club. We took at the end down. of it, somebody always produces yeah. a round ball and uh, <laughs> they're, they're kicking it around on the pitch whilst yeah. their parents are, are, are having a drink. Yeah. Yeah, the um, it's, it's rugby league World Cup next year. Yeah, mm. and um, that'll be a huge thing. Oh, that's well. in, in the UK. It's in the UK yeah, okay. next year, and um, our chairman, who uh, for this Isle of Wight, he does a lot of work overseas, and he does a lot of work with um, <coughs> the islands in the, uh, yeah. in the mm. and so he he does work for uh, the Cook Islands and Samoa and oh, right, uh, okay. uh, uh, Mauritius and uh, Seychelles and all that sort of stuff. Um, That's a good job, yeah, and uh, no, no doubt he has to visit, you know, to some yeah, yeah, relationships. <laughs> he said he's, he's, he's not in the moment, but he was saying that, because I keep saying to him, because he's looking after the Cook Islands, mm. and I keep saying, Cook Islands are here for a league, if you need someone to help you uh, actually just mm. release that, yeah. because yeah. they're actually, it's probably, I want to say it's by design, but they're, they're actually staying and, and uh, doing all the training in Middlesbrough, which is... Birthplace of Captain Cook, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so I'm hoping that's by design. Yeah. But, they're, but they're actually doing that. So the, you've got the you've got the Cook Island Rugby League team yeah. probably going to be going to the Bath Place Museum of oh, Captain wow. Cook yeah. and all that that's sort of stuff. Cool. Yeah. It's quite interesting. But he's he's he said yeah it'll bring a lot of coverage for yeah. uh, uh, you know that stuff to go out to there. So you were in the army? Oh, the army reserve, yeah. Oh, the army reserves? Okay. Yeah. Like what used to be called the territorial army. Ah. Was that, was that a long time ago? Um, I finished in 2008. I joined in 1980, so I did 28 years. Army. So what do you do in that as a territorial army compared to like was a normal army? Or? Um, well, I, I was a signaller, so a communicator. Um, I, I, from about um, happened a little bit, didn't happen in Gulf War One. Uh, happened a little bit around Kosovo, so there were a lot of reservists yeah. used in Kosovo, maybe 10%. Yeah. Um, uh, but then definitely Iraq, Afghanistan. But well, you went out there? Or? No, I didn't. I didn't personally go, yeah. but they, the original concept of the Army Reserve was you, you were a unit, and if there was, you know, if the Soviets invaded, okay. you all you, you rushed off uh, yeah. as a ready-made unit to go to war. Yeah. Um, that changed um, turn of the millennium really into it being used as individual reservists. So if you had an army unit that was short, yeah. uh, then they would make up the numbers mm -hmm. by calling up okay. individual reservists. <clears throat> so. Um, it sort of changed what the Army Reserve was about yeah. uh, for me, and it meant I never got called up because I was a I was a major and finished as a <coughs> lieutenant colonel, um, and they weren't short of those, but they were short of uh, soldiers on the ground. So if you were, you know, a youngster in your twenties, yeah. uh, if you joined if you joined the TA as it was the Army Reserve. Any time after about 1998, certainly early 2000s, then you joined on the very clear understanding that within five years you'd be expected uh, to take uh, uh, six months, six months, six to nine months off work for a tour in Iraq or Afghanistan, and, yeah. and that pretty much was was the case. The the catch was they didn't they didn't mobilise you. So they asked you to volunteer, and the subtle difference is, you know, so some people got mobilised, really specialist medical staff, for example, got mobilised. You're mobilised, you, you got protection in law uh, against, for example, your house being repossessed if you don't pay your mortgage, um, because your army pay is less than your civilian pay, for example, um, although they changed that, so from 2000 and six or seven, they topped up your army pay to be the same as your civilian pay yeah. if, it, if, if it was um, more. Um, so I just basically didn't get the opportunity because uh, you had to volunteer, which meant I couldn't afford to pay my mortgage. Yeah. And then by the time they brought the rule in um, that said, oh, don't worry, we'll, we'll give you enough money to pay your mortgage, um, I was pretty much too old and, uh, okay. and, and too senior. Like, Colonel, should we stood up and, uh, <laughs> and did a wee bit of saluting and things like that, we? <laughs> So I joined IBM in August. I was meant to go to Sandhurst in September. Yeah. And I basically, the Friday before, uh, called a Sandhurst. I have to say I wasn't, I wasn't going. Ah. And then all through my 20s, when I, would, I was still in, obviously as under TA, I was going on courses. Yeah. Um, and I would bump into friends who had gone mm. regular and I hadn't. And I was all, always, all through my 20s, always regretted not having joined the regular army. Oh, really? Um, but then by the time I was in my 30s, um, it, it was the opposite. You know, yeah. I was, you know, I had better career prospects, was earning more money. I had the best of both worlds yeah. in terms of I could do the, the military stuff and, mm. and still yeah. live a, a normal life. Um, yeah. Because one, one of the real problems with the military is by the time you're 32, mm. 33, you, as an officer this is, um, you'll have done an exam 
on that exam uh, called Staff College Entrance Exam. Mm. And that exam basically determines whether you're going to proceed, progress, any how far up the chain you're likely to progress. Oh, really? So unless you get into Staff College and pass an exam, you're highly unlikely to go beyond the rank of major. That's interesting. I thought it was so, just... So imagine at age 32 knowing what your ceiling mm. is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and most, and, and you know, the percentage of people that, that pass the exam and get to go, and then, and then further than that, get past the course and get the right scores on the report to allow mm. them to proceed to, you know, because uh, Lieutenant Colonel is, uh, it's what they call a command, you know, so mm. you, you're commanding a, a, you know, a battalion or a regiment. And you can only do that if you've done this course. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I, I mean, I was fortunate, you know, because I, I wouldn't have had the confidence. It's akin to, you know, the entrance exam for, for you know, Cambridge or Oxford. Mm. It's, it's that sort of um, standard. That's weird. I thought it would have been, like, moving up the ranks would be based on, you know, time, the time you've been in, you know, longevity. And, you know, um, how, how good you are, I suppose, um, as a... Yeah, to a point, only up to the rank of major. Mm. And then as a soldier, of course, as a soldier, you can only do 22 years. Mm -hmm. And then they, you get annual extensions, but typically never more than a few years beyond that. Yeah. Unless you get what they call a late entry commission as an officer, and then as an officer you can stay till you're 55, yeah. but still with very limited so you, career prospects in terms of promotion. Mm. So it's a, it's a strange, um, <clears throat> but yeah, but uh, so it's a great, you know, in your, 20s, in your 20s, it's got to be uh, the thing to do. Really? Mm. Uh, gee, I just... You must learn a lot from it, I suppose you get um, very regimented, I suppose, as well, which helps as well in it's a, it's business. Discipline comes in, doesn't it? Yeah, discipline yeah. 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 all comes in. I started off, um, when I left school, I started off as, um, as a policeman. Oh really? Yeah, I was a copper for uh, on the beat. eight or nine years. Yeah, absolutely in Central Scotland. Oh, wow. And um, you know, how long did you do that for? About about nine years in total. Sometime mm. in uh, the time in Scotland, then I transferred to West Yorkshire. Oh wow! So I worked in a What's that worked like in the South. I worked in a South East division. Yeah. Well, that's quite a career transition yeah. from um, from um, uh, law enforcement to. I guess marketing, marketing and mm. management and that sort of mm. stuff. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I just, I just got to the stage of thought, oh, this is, uh, you know, I, I was, I was living in Yorkshire and I thought mm, I could do with a bit of a change because what, what I had actually started doing was, it was in the eighties and it was a time when there was a lot of um, the new sort of in these days corporate hospitality was coming along mm. and um, I, 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 a couple of days off, I'd gone off to one of these like um, business expo type things mm. and just had a look around and there was this company there doing hospitality and I um, I got I got chatting to them and I did on my days off did a few bits of work with them mm -hmm. just to help them you know, um, you know activity days and things like that and I thought this is this is quite interesting stuff and, and uh, uh, looked at it all and thought you know what I'm actually gonna I'm gonna park okay. this uh, 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 been a couple of uh, malarkey, mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, I went back to uni, and, oh, really? and, and went back to uni in Leeds and did uh, hospitality management and marketing. That's to actually, to actually did it full time. Oh, so different. I had, I had a lot of support. Mm. But then came out of there and uh, uh, you know got the qualifications, came out of there and did it. But going back to John's thing, being in this is not like the army, but mm. but. You are given that discipline about mm. uh, having things just so, and uh, mm. you know, um, I'm, well, I'm, 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 a, I'm a bloody good shirt, uh, yeah. 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 Mm. And, and you know that sort of stuff. It's also right. the, it's also the, you know, the camaraderie and the, the yeah. bonding. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you make, um, you know, still, you know, friends. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not in contact with any school friends. No. A uh, couple from university, uh, but mostly in terms of longevity, long-term friends. Mm. It's not from um, civilian companies I've worked for, it's from my mm. days 
uh, in, in, the army, in the Army Reserve. Yeah, I've got a lot of friends who are policemen. So. Yeah, they, they, they just well, persist. Well, to be fair, you, they've retired now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when, yeah. They've had 50, when they've had 55, they've retired. So. Right, but you know, you go through those, those I, I guess, joint shared, uh, should I call them stressful yeah. or, um, you know, you know, scary experiences that you've been through. Mm. Uh, you know, just are, um, you know, they, they, they make you friends, friends for life, those, yeah. you know, sharing those sorts of experiences. Do you get to go back then to, because don't like if you've been in the army, you get the, the, the different sort of events where you can go back and yeah. um, is there those, you still get to do those sort of things? Yeah, as fact, a, yeah. I mean, obviously not this year, but, um, but yeah, I'm, I was in two, two main, you know, it, it's funny, and, um, perhaps a bit like the police, you, you change, you move units, move jobs um, in, in the army fairly often, but your first unit is often, you know, the one, so my first unit I was in for 10 years. Yeah. So, you know, those are the, the, the reunions that I go back to, and then the parent mm. unit of that mm. uh, unit has larger scale mm. reunions at you know, key milestones, you know, typically every five years or so. So, um, so yeah, I do... And do you get go. suited and booted and all that sort of thing? Or? Um, yeah, usually you don't get to... Yes, you do. You get in black tie, or quite often black tie. You don't, you don't get to uniform anymore? They get uniform. Oh. I don't, they... I guess technically, well, it wouldn't fit, it would be, you know, <laughs> the main. But I do still, I do still have my my dress uniforms oh, wow. in boxes in in the attics, which yeah. Um, um, yeah, I would need to lose a bit, to <laughs> quite a bit. This mail's not going to help. Just into them. Well, can I say that I find that in lockdown, lockdown has not been kind to me in certain ways like that. Yeah. And mm. um, there have been all these little fairies going into our cupboard and I've been unpicking all the, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, the yeah. trousers oh, yeah. and actually pulling yeah, them in a little it. bit. And, oh, and so I don't know what's going on. for everybody. It's, yeah, just, it's, it's not right. Where it happened with Simon is, you know, as you're driving out of the red funnel uh, terminal and the vehicle entrance and you stop, you know, on... It was. It's literally right there, uh, mm. yeah, and so yeah. every Friday night or Thursday night, uh, I'm driving. I'm driving, driving past it, and I can't. Every time, I can't. You know, help, but you know, uh, have a little, have a little glance at it. Mm. Um, so because you know you don't want to forget, and uh, but it's. Um, so I don't know how I got got onto that, but it is. Mm. Yeah, you're right. You segment it and yeah. you, yeah. you just click you, it, you click you, it away. Yeah, 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 put it away. Yeah. Simon was a great. Well, I, mean, I always remember Simon. Um, we did. Uh, I think it was cows night. We had a no, that's it. A chamber cows thing, mm. and we went out for um, drinks afterwards. And there was the white fiver guys there, and um, so we ended up chatting with Simon. And now Simon said, "Oh, come on." Go and get a curry. So we all went up, go and get a curry together. Yeah. It's a bit like, mm. It was a bit loud. <laughs> and then, um, and I kept saying to Simon, I'm going to take you to the secret bar. And he just kept going all, all night. It was like, if you take me to the secret bar, then Matt could open Because there, there was this, I was told there was a secret bar. No, we did actually get to the secret bar and we had the drinks there. It's really fun. Well, it's not a secret bar, it's, it's the not, Vectors. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he was been to go, come on, take me to the secret bar. And then ever since then. But it's then, the one yeah. that stays open till 2 a.m. Yeah. Yes. And then he just. It's the last, last one in Cairo. Yeah. And then he used to just remind me every time I saw him after that. But he's, um, he was such a nice guy, he signed was. Yeah, it was yeah. an absolute tragedy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As much for his family, he had a young family, so. Yeah. yeah. That's what made He was it a Villa fan as well. Good. Well, he was forced into, no, he was forced into being a Villa because his, so um, his father in law was, yeah. was a Villa fan. Because yeah. we were going to go see Southampton Villa together because Shane's a Villa fan and Simon obviously is a fan. Okay. And, um, and Adam's a Southampton fan. So we were, right, were planning to go oh, and okay. see like Southampton Villa together with Simon and his. Yeah, his father-in-law's <coughs> a season ticket holder, so yeah, he's he obsessed with Villa fans. He, yeah. he used to go. You trying? You see, you seem to be trying to year. indoctrinate me. That's it. Villa <laughs> thing, Villa <laughs> thing. That's yeah. what this is all about. So yeah, yeah. have you ever uh, got Clarence and Plate now? You know Jamie from Either White Radio yeah, is a Villa, Villa, Villa fan as well. Yeah. yeah, it's weird that he's, the Villa fans just drop, just sort of drop out of the sky. So everywhere. Oh, he's been. To be fair, he's a. It's. It's one of the running jokes on on the breakfast show. Yeah, he gets, he gets uh, that, that, that taken in. <laughs> taken Not in. at the moment, though, because we're, mm. we're doing okay. <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, he did make it on the day they 
they avoided relegation. He did. Uh, he did make sure he, he was on the news <laughs> the next morning. Yeah, Aston Villa have scored. <laughs> 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 oh dear, I've been a Villa fan. Do you know? I, I think I became a Villa fan when I was. I was sort of must have been like seven years old, and I was. It was literally the colour of the shirt. It must be the classic design. Oh, so you've got thing, no family it? connection. There's no family anything. connection. No, my dad okay. supports Wolves. My brother supports Blackburn. <clears throat> um, my mum supports me, Man United. It's like so random in our house. Um, but uh, but yeah, when I was younger, I think it was almost like the claret and blue tops. So luckily it wasn't I, I, West I used Ham. To get, uh, I used to get lifted over the turnstiles. You remember that, yeah? You lifted over the turnstiles. I used to get lifted over the turnstiles at Falkirk. My dad used to go there at Falkirk. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. And, 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 but kids never paid. And oh really? Oh no, no. And these were the days. The turnstiles that you go through, and the kids would just get lifted up over the top yeah. of it and go in, and um, uh, the adults would pay. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh, it's not like that now. I, I wasn't into uh, yeah. football ever. Yeah. I'll you know I'll follow it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, I'd we, have interest. We, yeah, we got lifted up over there, and then uh, New Year's Day, all the all the uh, grown-ups would turn up. And, You'd never be able to get away with it now, but they'd turn up and they'd go, OK, a little bit out of my whiskey bottle, thanks very much, congratulations, <laughs> happy new year. And Because yeah. uh, you always did, they always did yeah. Scotland, in Scotland, you always do football on New Year's Day. Oh, oh did they? Oh, they did. Yeah. yeah but, um, do you go back to Scotland at Christmas um, time? Very now, often. No, no, not very often. Um, not I've got, some, I've got some friends there, family there, but I don't get up that uh, <coughs> often, no. to be fair. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, last time I went up, it was, what? So you don't have family up there still? Yeah, mm -hmm. my brother's there and uh, his family, but uh, we don't see too much. Uh -huh. um, but the, uh, and, and my, my closest friend is there. Yeah. Um, uh, so we, go, we, 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 we alternate between here and Scotland for yeah. that. So yeah. every, every couple of years we'll go there, he'll come with us. And oh, so, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Last time, cheap, cheeky little uh, flyby flight up to, up to Edinburgh and uh, away you go. For us, we try, we try, as it, for, you see, for visit hour, we're trying to get the connectivity side of it all because and because you're working with tourism zones yeah. that are coming through through the industrial strategy of the government yeah. and, and part of that is all about connectivity yeah. and um, to have that right connectivity here is so important mm. because whilst people sometimes come on holiday here for a nice relaxing mm -hmm. break and all that sort of stuff, you, you still have to have that connectivity. Well, if, uh, bringing, if you bring kids won't go, kids won't go on holiday and I say no, yeah. they can be They've connected. Got, uh, yeah. we, we went to, it just came up on my Facebook post this morning, two years ago we went to um, Centre Parks in the Netherlands yeah. uh, for, um, uh, for a long weekend. Oh, sorry, for the Monday to Thursday uh, mm -hmm. hang on there. And... Um, because my friend, he, my, my friend works for Centre Parks in, on, in, on the continent, but the um, one of the things the kids both said, uh, uh, "How's the how's the Wi-Fi, Dad, at yeah. Centre Parks?" Yeah. I says, "I think it's okay." Yeah, what what kind of level is it? <laughs> and, and, that, yeah. and that was the question that came out. And yeah. Um, yeah. but when they got there, we didn't do anything around it. They didn't need no, it. No. Yeah, we played, we, we played games, yeah. we played cards, no, we went there. out and did activities. Yeah. Yeah. But they just know that they can if they want. But it's it. certainly true here. I mean, I did before your time. I, I we sponsored the annual tourism uh, conference, yeah. conference. Yeah. and so I got to do a little a ten minute presentation, and I, I thought it, it, it was quite clever. I, I went back and found ads from each one from each decade. Mm. I, Isle of Wight accommodation providers mm. advertising onto the island. It's quite interesting. I dig this out uh, if you want to see it. But in the in the 1900s, it was about being close to the train station, and they'll come and pick you up yeah. from the train station because mm. everybody yeah. travels yeah. by train. Um, then it became uh, we've got car parking spaces, so that was the selling point. You can park your car. Mm. Uh, and then it became, you know, radio. Radios in your room. Ah, okay. And then it became, uh, you know, TV lounge. Yeah. And then yeah. color TV lounge. Yeah. And then color TV in your room. Uh, yeah. And en suite yeah. uh, bathrooms came along at some point there. too. So each decade there was something different. And the parallel that I drew to Wi-Fi, you know, right now, or then, anyway, going back a few years. You know, people think you can put a Wi-Fi router in the hallway and have Wi-Fi in, in the reception area. Mm. Um, and 
you know, they don't want to pay to put it into each of each individual rooms. But that the parallel was, it used to be okay to have a TV in the lounge, yeah. not one in your room. But when you had to put a TV in the room, you had to pay for it. Yeah. So, you know, white fiber didn't pay to put a TV in. And this, it's the same now. If you want Wi-Fi spread throughout your building, yeah. you can see one on the window there, yeah. you've got to put these Wi-Fi access points around yeah. the building yeah. at your cost, not at, yeah, yeah. at our cost. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was the message I was... And But I think now, um, the, the, you know, the, the market's been educated yeah, and yeah. they know they want to do it, but it's still a challenge. Now... Well, thanks guys for joining us at the table. No, it's okay. anyhow. No, it's You're been, welcome. It's, it's been, been, it's been a pleasure it. to be here. It's nice to yeah. sit down and have a, have a chat about lots of things. And yeah, it's just something a bit different, sort of, yeah. just sort of chill out and shoot the breeze, really, talk about whatever comes of it. I think it's quite nice that it's just ad lib and you don't have to, yeah. not even ask you this question, that question. Just mm -hmm. kind of enjoyed it. We'll have to cut half it out, though. Yeah, that's well, the only well, problem. Yeah. It's going to be a shorter <laughs> set, so.